Hi everybody, welcome to The Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be for all of you game schoolers. Now this is actually a video that I am co-hosting with Ingrid from Mommy and Me Homeschool Chronicles, and we have put together a collaboration that is going to last for the next month, bringing you games by subject for a gift buying guide. So make sure you subscribe and click that little bell icon so that you can be notified when new videos come out because you're not going to want to miss them. And check that playlist in the description box down below so you can see all of our favorite games. Not just ours, but a lot of Homeschool Mama's favorite games. Now before I start, I want to give you like a little tip that I have and it is these photo boxes. Now I buy mine from Michaels. I buy the large briefcases because... Um, I really like the colorful ones and I have a lot of games. So one of those big briefcases holds 16 of these. And as you can see, this holds two deck of standard size cards or one large um, double deck like Uno. So I can fit anywhere from 20 to 30 games in one of those big briefcases. So this is what I do to minimize on space. So if you don't have a lot of space, one of those briefcases will house quite a bit of games for you. The first round of games that I'm going to be showing you is going to be math. And the first half of the video is going to be those math games that will fit inside a stocking. The first game I have is Uno. And it is because it is great for color and number recognition. It is also a game that is readily available at almost any store. And it is one that many people are familiar with. So it's one that's easy to grab and have multiple people play like grandparents because they probably already know how to play it. Along those same lines is Yahtzee. Now this is the to-go Yahtzee, so it's a small cup. Um, it came with the pencils, and the only thing that is like different than normal is the score pad is folded in half. So when you rip the pages off, you just have to open them up. But this is one, again, that multiple people will know how to play. It's readily available at almost any store, and rolling those dice and adding those numbers is going to get some serious math in. Another game that we really like is Math War. So these are just math cards that have addition and subtraction facts, and it plays just like Standard War. This game is less than $5 on Amazon, and it is um, so much fun, and it gets a lot of math in, because whoever has the highest number after the math problem gets to win the cards. There's also multiplication and division version of this as well. We just aren't there yet. We also really love the Clumsy Thief games. Now this is Clumsy Thief in a candy shop. Um, as you can see here, there are multiples or sums of 20. So the way it works is you make stacks of 20 and then you have the thief that steals the candy. Um, and you have little gel cards where you can gel him, just all kinds of fun things. It's a kind of a race game, so it's fast paced. So it really encourages your child uh, to know those facts quickly. Uh, the Clumsy Thief Candy Shop is sums up to 20, and just the original Clumsy Thief is sums up to 100. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing. Another game that we really love is Zeus on the Loose. So you have these adorable um, god cards that do special things, and it encourages a lot of the Greek gods as well because they're all um, Greek, Greek gods and goddesses. And in the instructions guide... It also tells you quite a bit about them. But what you're doing is you're discarding cards and there's different tips and tricks, um, either discarding a God card or discarding a 10 or a multiple of 10 gets you this little Zeus character. And you wanna have Zeus in your hand because whoever has him when Mount Olympus, which is your discard pile, reaches 100, wins the game. So it encourages a lot of adding and subtracting because the entire time you're um, discarding and laying down these God cards, the Mount Olympus total is changing. So you have to know that addition and subtraction. If you have younger kids, my tip is to play with an abacus. So we play with an abacus so that my daughter can visualize what Mount Olympus is and she can move those beads back and forth. We also really love sleeping queens. So you have these adorable queens that are asleep and you're trying to wake them up. But the trick to Sleeping Queens is you can play um, multiple 
like this, like five plus five equals 10. And you could discard those three cards if you know that math problem. So that is a fun way to just encourage a little bit of math while playing a fun game. We also really like the Math Dice game. Now this is Math Dice Junior. There's a um, Math Dice and then a Math Dice Chase, depending on whether your child just needs addition and subtraction or multiplication will be um, dependent on which one you buy. But you have this cute little fabric game board that folds up and goes inside there. And you roll a 12-sided dice to get your target number. And then you roll five colorful dices and people um, players will call out like different ways that equal that target number and take those dice away. And then they get to move the number of places um, that dice they have. So it encourages you to try to add in different ways because you want to get the most dice possible that equal that number. So it encourages multiple digit addition and not a lot of games do that. Another thing we really love is the Moby Kids. This is very similar to Scrabble, but math style. So it has numbers, um, it also has addition, subtraction, and equal symbols. So you can kind of do like equations and you'd play it very similar to like Bananagrams or Scrabble, but in number and math form. And also this is really great for travel because it's a small little package. And my cat is walking over my head. Um, Roll For It is another game that is super cute. So you have these cards laid out and each person is rolling these tiny dice trying to match the card. And if you can match the card, you get the card. And whoever gets 25 points first wins. So you have the number recognition, probability, and then addition of each of the cards built into this game. Quicks is another game that is tons of fun. You have six dice total, two white dice and four color dice. And you roll them and you have to add all of the dice up and then you um, check off on the game boards which ones you're going to use and then you have to also score your points. So another one that has a lot of addition in it. Exact change is very similar to Uno. So you have cards. Okay, let me open it so you can see this one better. So your cards are color coded with coins on them. And so for instance, you can either match the coin or the color, or you could lay down things that equal that. So here is 20 cent. So you could equal, um, you could lay down the dime. And if you had two nickels, because that all equals the 20 cent. So it encourages um, adding of coins, knowing your coins, the sums of coins, the identification, you know, what the coin is, and it has some color recognition in it too. They also include a, um, a reference card like this. By that same maker is perfect timing. So with perfect timing, you have one clock, you have a target time, you're all working together by using these move the clock cards. Um, and each player plays one of these to move the clock a certain amount of time, trying to hit that target time. So it's a cooperative game that is also working on telling time. And because it's cooperative, you can work together a little bit better than, um, you know, than competing against each other. Because you can work with your child and say, no, I think we should play this card. And so this is a great first step for a time game. Pop the Numbers is a learning resource game, and so you spin this little spinner, and then you pull out a number, and if you get the pop, you pop, and everything has to go back in, and what you're doing is you're spinning the spinner to see if you're going for the greater number or the lesser number, so you both pull out a number, or you all pull out a number, and if eight was the greater number and we had rolled greater, I would get them both. Um, if you pull out a pop, everything goes back. So it's really good for number recognition, greater than, less than, and we are still able to fit this inside a stocking. The last stocking size one I have is, let's see, where's that at? I see 10. So what it is, is all these cute little bubbles and you're flipping them over and whoever can spot a sum of 10 first gets them. Um, you also have 
you have all these little sea creatures. So they're all swimming around and you take turns flipping them over and you're slowly flipping them over one by one. And then whoever has a combination of 10 first gets to grab it. Whoever has the most wins. The great thing about this game is while it's made to be played to 10, you could pick different things to play it to. So you could say, okay, we're working on sums up to five. So whatever you see that equals five is what we're going to win today and etc. So that's why this one is really good because it's super versatile. Okay, starting the games that would no longer fit in a stocking, the first one I have for you is actually not a math game, but it probably has more math than most math games in it, and it is an amazing game. It would rank in my top 10 favorites of all games, and it's Dragonwood. So in Dragonwood, you are trying to lay down these cards in either numeric order, um, by a set, or by color matching, and then depending on how many you lay down, will dictate how many dice you get to roll. Then you have to add all the dice up to see if you win one of these cards. Super fun, and you have things like fire ants and grumpy trolls, which just makes it even more fun and funny. Um, and it also has a lot of probability in it as well. I recommend this for absolutely anybody, whether you homeschool or not. This is an amazing game. Everybody should own it. That's my uh, two cents for Dragonwood. We have Pizza Fraction Fun Junior. So this is actually seven games on one. So inside here, there are directions for seven different ways to play this. You can see that there's a couple different spinners here. And then you have pizza with all kinds of toppings in different uh, fraction sets. We have four-way countdown. So if you've ever seen Shut the Box, this is very similar to that. The only difference is you are able to play with four players. So you would hit this little bubble and then you would do the math. So like five plus three, you could put an eight down or um, five minus three, you could put a two down. So whoever gets all of them down first wins that game. The next two games I have are Eboo games. If you've never seen an Eboo game, they are simple, but they're the most amazing quality. Their illustrations, their construction, it is, the quality is just amazing. So I want all of them. But one of the ones we have is the Simple Math Lotto, and it is addition and subtraction. So you have the game board that is addition on one side and subtraction on the other. And like you can see here, this is a three, and so you would put it on the three plus zero. And we play to whoever fills their board up first wins. We also have the Eboo Telling Time game. And so in this game, each person gets their own cute little clock. And you can draw cards and you match your clock to the card. And you're doing analog and digital time. The cards are color coded. So you have um, to the hour, to the half hour, to the 15 minutes, and to the five so that anybody can play based off of the level that they're at. So if you're only learning time to the hour, you would pull out the rest of the cards and you would only play, play with that color or time to the half hour and you would leave out what you haven't learned yet. Now I have two games that are similar and I'm gonna explain the differences in the games to you. And that is we have some Swamp and Sums in Space. Both of these games play very similar in that you roll dice um, that are addition and subtraction dice. You do the problem, you move that many spaces, and then you have even and odd numbers on the board. And whether you land on an even or an odd, you can roll the dice and move that many more if what you landed on or if what you rolled is an even or an odd. They're both amazing games. They're super fun. The big difference is some swamp dice goes up to six. So it's sums um, that, are, you know, basically six plus six would be the highest number that you could do. Where sums in space dice is a 10 sided dice. So you could have up to 10. There's also a cooperative gameplay included in sums in space that is not included in some swamp. However, we still like some swamp better and I don't know why. Maybe it's because we had it first and so it's just near and dear to our heart, but that's us personally. But both of these games are great for addition and subtraction. They're fun, fun board games. We also have and love money bags. So money bags is mainly coin counting. So you um, roll a dice and you move and let's say this says 40 cent. You spin the spinner and then you have to make 40 cent 
uh, based off of this. So maybe it says you can't use quarters. So you have to make 40 cent not using quarters or not using nickels and um, just different combinations. So this is great for learning to count money, adding money, learning the value of it, um, doing it in different forms than what you would normally do because a lot of people just know that two quarters is 50 cent, but this may force you to figure out what it is not using quarters. So that makes this game really fun and really educational because there's not many that have, um, that are based off of coins. The next two games I have are larger games. So I'm gonna try to fit them on the screen. One is Dino Math Tracks. So this game is a board game where you have dinosaurs for the ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands place, you roll dice and you make a number. You can make the number um, however you want. I make my daughter read it so she's reading numbers correctly. And then you move like your ones dinosaur however many places you put in the ones and so forth. You have to get all of your dinosaurs across the finish line in order to win. It also includes a deck of cards that are challenge cards so you can um, step it up when you're ready to step up and have more challenges included with this place value game. The little pieces are also dinosaurs, which are adorable. You have um, stegosauruses and long necks, and I think there's mastodons, and um, it just makes it cute, so it's a super fun game. My tower of games is gonna topple. Another game that I have is the Buy It Right. And it is super adorable. You have um, basically a store and a shopping cart and you are going shopping and spending your money and you get a calculator and dice. Um, this is a fun game for money and also practical money because you're in the store actually shopping, which is a practical way that we would be spending money. And there are, if you can see here, there's three skill levels. So it's one that could grow with your child. The last game I have is Even Stevens Odd. And so this is, kind of reminds me of Tinsy because you have these um, cards that tells you what, that you flip it over and this is what everybody's going for. So you might be going for three pairs, all odd numbers, a straight. Um, there's some that, you know, five dice are odd and one is even. And everybody's rolling their dice as fast as they can to get whatever that card says. And then once you've got what that card says, you try to grab this little, we call him Dice Guy. He probably has a name, but he's adorable. Whoever grabs Dice Guy first wins that round. And um, he's just so cute. Who wouldn't want to, you know, grab Dice Guy? So that game is fun. It has also helped us talk about what a straight is, um, worked on even and odd and working on recognizing it quickly because it's a fast paced game. So it's not like one of those where it's like, oh wait, let me count, is it an even, is it an odd? Like you have to know it and you have to know it quickly. So that is a great game for that. That is it, that's all of the math games I have to show you today. We have other math games, but they weren't my mine or my daughter's favorite, so I didn't pull them down for you. What you've seen today are probably our top math games for game schooling. They are our favorite math games for game schooling. If you have a favorite, I would love for you to tell me. Leave it in the comments because if you have a favorite math game I don't own, I need to know about it because I need to buy it for Christmas. <laughs> and I hope you join us for the other subjects. We still have more coming at you over the next month and I can't wait to share those with you.